Hello citizens of internet. I am Professor Ajit Virkur from Mumbai, India. Today I am going to take a deep dive into a pathophysiological phenomena that occurs in some pregnant women that can be detrimental to the mother as well as the fetus sometimes. It is called supine hypotension syndrome also known as aortocable syndrome. It is also known after a person. Let me not disclose the name at this moment. If you can guess, write the name in the comments box below. Supine hypotension syndrome is defined as a decrease in systolic blood pressure of at least 15 to 30 millimeters of mercury when a pregnant woman assumes supine position. It may be associated with other symptoms. Only 10 to 15 percent of women at term demonstrate supine hypotensive syndrome of pregnancy. Why only a small percentage of pregnant women suffer from hypotension in the second half of pregnancy, but majority of others do not requires deeper understanding, which I will unravel later. I will now do a detailed discussion of the pathophysiology of this phenomenon. The standard explanation is as follows. From second trimester onwards, the weight of the gravid uterus becomes sufficient enough to cause compression of the inferior vena cava as well as the abdominal aorta. The thin-walled, low-pressure inferior vena cava gets compressed, leading to decrease in the venous return to heart. This sets off a cascade of physiological events. It causes fall in cardiac output and consequently fall in blood pressure, which is the syndrome. But if this was the only explanation, then every pregnant patient in advanced stage of pregnancy would suffer from hypotension and other symptoms every time she assumed supine position. There has to be another explanation. When I was asked this question, in my postgraduate examination, I gave the other explanation which no other student must have given. I call it the gold medal level answer. Inadequacy of paravertebral collateral blood supply is one etiology behind this hypertension. Women who do not develop supine hypertension syndrome of pregnancy demonstrate compensatory mechanisms including increased collateral venous blood flow through the paravertebral and azygous venous system leading to increased cardiac preload and reflex increase in systemic vascular resistance to maintain hemodynamic stability. Thus, only those women with inadequate compensatory mechanisms that is inadequate blood flow to the paravertebral azygous venous system will suffer from supine hypotension syndrome. I haven't finished with pathophysiology. Now let me say a few things about the so-called aortocaval syndrome. The name implies that symptoms occur because of compression of the abdominal aorta as well as inferior vena cava. Is that so? No, not really. I will explain. Inferior vena cava is a thin-walled tubular structure that gets compressed, compromising its lumen significantly and thus reduce venous return to the heart. On the other hand, the abdominal aorta is a very thick-walled structure. The arterial blood flowing through it is at a very high pressure. The intra-arterial pressure is so high that if aorta were to be nicked accidentally during surgery, the blood would hit the ceiling as the saying goes. So, although the abdominal aorta does get compressed, arterial blood supply to lower part of the body including the uterus and fetus within it is not compromised. Remember that. So, according to me, the aortocaval syndrome name is a misnomer. Risk factors leading to supine hypertension syndrome include size, shape and weight of the uterus. 
chances of getting supine hypotension syndrome are more common with multiple pregnancies and obese parturients in addition the syndrome is exacerbated by neuraxial blocks due to the confounding sympathetectomy symptoms of this syndrome include tachycardia diaphoresis which is excessive sweating nausea vomiting dizziness light headedness pallor and weakness women can lose consciousness and even maternal and or fetal death can occur rarely hypertension can also be so severe that it affects the fetus and leads to fetal distress symptoms usually occur within 3 to 10 minutes after lying down they are usually transient and resolve with change in positioning just for academic interest some normal physiology for you femoral venous pressure increases to 25 cm of water from the normal 8 to 10 cm of water in the non pregnant stage in supine position in standing position femoral venous pressure is 80 to 100 cm of water treatment is very simple since the cause is compression of inferior vena cava which anatomically is on the right side of the aorta just turning the patient into left lateral position will resolve the compression and restore full venous return and thereby hypotension other options include putting a wedge or a block on the right side of the back to achieve left lateral tilt manual displacement of the gravid uterus has also been described left uterine displacement is performed by manually moving the uterus away from the midline to the left side when the patient is supine as shown here prevention is also important pregnant women at more than 20 weeks of gestation should be advised to lie or sleep in the full left lateral position placing a wedge under the right hip to achieve a left lateral tilt of 15 to 30 degrees has been used in practice for labor and delivery as well as non obstetric surgery in pregnant patients undergoing anesthesia in order to prevent supine hypotension syndrome in conclusion i will discuss the clinical importance of this syndrome any experienced obstetrician will vouch for me when i say that we rarely see pregnant women in second half of their pregnancy ever complaining of the symptoms of supine hypotension syndrome we have observed pregnant women admitted with complete bed rest for various diseases complicating pregnancy such as preeclampsia or heart disease lying in hospital beds for weeks in supine position without any adverse symptoms in spite of telling them to lie in the left lateral position they continue to sleep in supine position without problems so what is the importance of this syndrome in actual practice the answer is in women undergoing cesarean delivery at term under regional anesthesia such as spinal anesthesia when we used to practice obstetrics almost all women were given spinal anesthesia for cesarean delivery unless there was a contraindication to regional anesthesia we have seen n number of women developing sudden severe hypotension as soon as they were given spinal anesthesia and put in supine position for surgery in the private hospital where i performed cesareans the operation table had a special lever for giving left lateral tilt and my anesthesiologist dr koraksha would religiously give left lateral tilt using the liver after giving spinal sweet memories gone are those days however in contemporary practice anesthesiologists nowadays do not give left lateral position after regional anesthesia current recommendations for preventing supine hypotension syndrome is rapid infusion of a crystalloid colloid and phenylephrine solution targeted at maintaining baseline systolic blood pressure studies have shown that maternal supine position during elective cesarean delivery 
with spinal anesthesia in healthy term women does not impair neonatal acid base status when maternal systolic blood pressure is maintained by rapid infusion of ringer lactate solution and phenylephrine infusion these findings may not be generalized to emergency situations or non reassuring fetal status all in all you would feel that this topic is not very much important in modern obstetrics but remember from the postgraduate examinations point of view supine hypotension syndrome is a high yield topic if you want to know more about this topic or any other topic in obstetrics and gynecology please refer to my books modern gynecology modern obstetrics and practical obstetrics and gynecology and other books for purchase inquiries contact me on this whatsapp number i have also published two question answer books which are particularly useful for exam going students these are clinical cases in obstetrics 1000 plus questions and answers and clinical cases in gynecology 1000 plus questions and answers you can also follow me on other social media platforms like facebook or meta blogspot and instagram the links are given here if you enjoyed this video hit the like button share it with your friends and also subscribe to my channel for more videos like this thank you for watching